Hello everyone and welcome to Eddie J on Crypto. Gonna try to make this a quick video today. Um, indeed, there was a lot going on, so you know what? Let's just get to it. We have some news. Um, we have some move. well, I, I'd say some movement in the crypto space, so let's go take a look. So our portfolio that we set up, I haven't added anything since I set it up. Portfolio performance is only 1.22%. 1.227 percent um i'm hoping to see that you know grow after a little while uh we've got some upward movement from matic uh crypto.com not doing so great but you know things are starting to look a little bit up i mean yesterday matic went up 14 percent. i mean can you get really mad at that i mean had you bought um had you bought matic 24 hours ago you'd be up 14 percent. where else are you going to make that kind of money uh, paying attention to what's going on in the market, that kind of thing. And it's, like I said, I compared the stock market, except this one is a little bit better to me because I, I understand crypto a little bit more. Not much, but a little bit more. Um, but not so bad today. This is this is actually not bad at all when you think about, you know, how, how everything is going, how, how far down we've been. That said, let's skip over to the coins themselves and let's take a broader look, right? So Bitcoin back up around 40, over 42,000, closer to 43, actually hit above 43 today. You've got Ethereum still on sale at 3,200 32, in my opinion, but had actually touched 2,900, you know, in that range. So that's something I think about. Um, a huge move. That's that's a pretty big move for for uh, Binance coin. That's, that's kind of big. Um, but if you start looking all the way around, you start to see, wow, these are some nice ups. Look at Matic. Like I said, again, 24-hour period, you know, about 13 14%. That's a big move. All of these things are really big moves, right? Um, found some news or heard some news. I had I wasn't even thinking about it. Um, I had said that I was interested in, in, sand, in the sandbox. Um, they're up almost 6%. I mean, 5.94, that is 6% in my book. Um the sandbox is actually on Polygon. I did not know that. As well as the secondary um, for Decentraland is also Polygon, and Decentraland is looking to move fully over to Polygon. So that's huge. That's that that's really big news. Uh, Gala Games. Here's some news that I did not know about Gala Games. So I'm pretty sure a few of you might have heard that. Um, what is it? Yesterday or the day before? Uh, Take Two Interactive has, you know, made a bid and going to purchase uh, Zynga for twelve point seven billion dollars. Yeah, that's with a B. Um, that's a lot of money. That's not the significant part. The significant part is one of the founders of Zynga is the founder of Gala Games. So when you look at, you know, what that person has already done with all the games they've already, you know, created on that on Zynga and moving from from, you know, Facebook to, you know, mobile games, that's huge. So that kind of tells you the kind of brain trust that exists over at Gala Games. So I'm look I'm looking at Gala and I'm thinking that's going to go up and I think there's got to there's got to be a lot of running room for Gala Games because I think that they're just going to do a whole bunch of things that are going to make them go up. Um, something else that's coming up that people might, you know, may or may not know about is Chainlink is t is going to link up twelve blockchains simultaneously. Um, that means that there are going to be tons of decentralized applications that will now be able to be. I guess they'll be able to talk to each other at the same, you know. All of this happening simultaneously. So that is a huge big deal for Chainlink. Um, I told you before, I think Chainlink for me is a is a buy. Um, should definitely add it to the portfolio, and we'll do that in another session where we actually I'll actually, you know, grab a grab something and put it in you know in our portfolio and see see what it does going forward. But at twenty six dollars, I think it's still a steal. I'm, I mean, um, take a look at Chainlink over here. I'm clicking in the wrong place. That's brilliant. Um, look at that. $26, about $26.63. And the, the all-time high is still only $52.85. That's that's a lot of runway. That's still less than half. So if you got if if I get chain link right now, 
I think it's a steal. Do I think they're going to see you know that that all time high again? Oh yeah, I think they're. It's, I think sooner or later they're going to blow right through it because Chainlink again is one of those companies that I look at as connective tissue. Just with every and just look at what they're doing. They're connecting twelve blockchains simultaneously, and that's to, that's supposed to happen this month. So when that happens, expect that to just roar. Um, if it was me running Chainlink. See, I told you before that you're going to get a visit from Stitch, and here he is because he wants to play. Um, he doesn't understand that I don't have time to play right now that I'm supposed to be shooting a video. But when you look at um, Chainlink and them connecting all these blockchains, they can only go up. That's what I'm. That's what I'm seeing. I'm working over here. Really? Okay. Give me. All right. Sorry about that. Got to take care of the pup. Um, so I think Chainlink is going to is going to do a lot of things, and that's a big deal. Um, Algorand didn't even know this, but I heard somebody say it today, and I looked into it. Algorand is actually helping El Salvador move into the decentralization pay, uh, space. They're also doing that across social social Amer um, Central America. So when you look at what kind of reach they have, they're laying the foundation for countries to go toward the decentralized space as they realize that their own fiat is tanking or has already tanked. So that I think is going to be a big deal. And, you know, over time, I think that's what's going to make Algorand just pump up. Um, another piece of news, fandom, you know, they're on my radar, but they're not on my radar. So I think I, I think I have to put them there, right? Uh, let's look up phantom. Uh, was it FTM? Phantom Oasis? I forget which one they are. I think it's this one. Let's go see. Yeah, Phantom FTM is highly scalable, direct access to the financial market. Uh, DAG blockchain. Da, 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 da. This could be them. I'm not 100 percent sure. I didn't I didn't look them up, but I but Phantom. Um, I think is going places. Uh, I, doing some more research, they've got a they've got a big ecosystem, just like Polygon. Let me get off of this one because I don't know if that's actually them. They've got a big ecosystem, just like Polygon. Um, not as big, but a big ecosystem. Again, connective tissue is going to be something that I'm paying attention to when I when I look at what I want to purchase and what do I want to do with you know. With anything in the in the cryptocurrency Web three world, right? Um, actually, you know what? If I take this off, I think then I'll find Phantom. Yeah, that was them. Um, Mark, they're ranked twenty seventh on the list. Let's just add them to uh, to our list. I think that's a good thing. Litecoin back in the day used to be there, isn't there anymore for me right now. Um, I just don't see them moving. I, I just don't see them moving. Same thing with Stellar. I just I just don't see them moving. I don't see them doing anything. Um, it's a shame, but I, I just don't see it. Uh, mana, again, decentral land, great place, moving really slow. They need to hurry up and move over to uh, Polygon to, to catch up on that speed and do things like that. So that's something I'm looking at. But, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff. So something else that I want to touch on is, you know, my thoughts on 2022 is, you know, clearly you know, the idea of what a metaverse is, is going to be a big deal. Um, when you look at what a metaverse is to different, different definitions from different people, but just imagine any definition from any, 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 you know, group of people that know what they're talking about. That's not what I'm worried about, but I am thinking that it's a prevalent word enough that people are kind of in the same zone as to what, a, what the metaverse, what a metaverse can be because there are different metaverses. When you talk about linking 12 different blockchains, on those blockchains exist metaverses that will be able to talk to themselves. So if you look at the sandbox, if you look at Decentraland, those are two separate metaverses. Pavia is another separate metaverse. When you think about that, I think metaverses is gonna be a very big deal. What's the big deal in a metaverse? NFTs, and I don't mean NFTs as collectible art, I mean NFTs as items to be used in a metaverse. 
So imagine having that. And that's, probably, that's one of the reasons why I'm so hooked on UFO games. Uh, UFO games is building their metaverse and they're making it so that you, the normal user or you know developer, can actually build your own NFT, buy and sell that NFT, you know, whether it be a weapon, a hat, you know, clothing, whatever, whatever it is, that thing is yours within that metaverse. Nobody will be able to take it away from you. They'll only you'll only be able to sell it, trade it, whatever, but no admin will be able to take it away from you. What they're pitching is a completely decentralized application which is which to me sounds great that's where i think metaverse gaming is going to go not everything has to be high-end graphics some are going to be high some are going to be low and pixelated graphics think roblox that kind of thing um roblox again another metaverse so i think it's going to be the year of usable nfts not just nfts you can hang on a wall or use as an image somewhere but usable nfts i think that's going to be big gaming is going to be huge especially when you think about play to earn gaming yeah you heard what i said that's gaming where you actually get paid to play the game why because there are probably ads in there or whatever else but you're getting paid to play the game and that's a big deal how long, you know, is play to earn going to be going to last? I don't know. But considering metaverses aren't fully built out yet and they're all still trying to get people on board, I think that's going to be a very big deal. So that's why I look at, you know, things like mana, things like mana, things like gala games, things like UFO gaming. Um, each one of these companies is doing something that is attracting people. And when you say attracting people, that means they're attracting you know, the regular person. And the more regular people that you attract, the more popular you're going to get, the more active your coin is going to be, the more you, the more the value is going to go up in what's going on in that space. So I think that's going to be the prevalent, the prevalent thing. So metaverses, usable and usable NFTs, you know, the, the la la around, you know, having an NFT that's, you know, some kind of a picture or something like that. Yeah, that's cute. That's nice. It's, Still, it'll still have some value, but I really do think that um, usable NFTs is going to be where it's at. And I think that, the, you know, there are going to be new jobs that are going to be created because of these metaverses. I mean, just imagine you're a developer at a bank, but it means you have a certain skill. So imagine you take your skill over to a metaverse and you start building out just new things. Clothing, weapons, hats. Nike already proved it. They just bought a company who that builds and creates uh, wearable clothing in a metaverse, in a metaverse. That's jaw dropping. It was a couple of bill, a couple of billion dollars. That makes you stop and go, whoa, it's not a little thing. Um, cryptocurrency companies are snatching good talent from everywhere, especially the financial space. You know. People are being burnt out from financial institutions. They're upset with them. They're moving too slow. They don't like what they're all about. And they just say, skip it. I'm going to go over here. And they'll go over there and make more money. So the same way fintech was snatching people from traditional banking, you have the cryptocurrency space that's also snatching from fintech and traditional banking. So that's going to be huge. Um, I'm just trying to rifle through everything fairly quickly. Um, uh, L1s, I keep touching on this, L1s, I think, you know, are going to do nothing but go up because these are the protocols that each one of these metaverses, games, all that stuff, this is what they're running on. So if I'm creating a game, I've got to figure out, well, which blockchain do I want to run my game? Well, Decentraland had chosen Ethereum and now their metaverse is moving dog slow, whereas Sandbox? moving right along just fine because they're on Polygon. That's a big deal to me. I mean, when Ethereum 2.0 2 comes out, um, they still have to do a couple of things even after that to make it faster, but they're making the right moves to make their, make their, make their blockchain faster. Still, in the time that it takes them to do that, Polygon's already got a scaling solution in place, and they're do they're actually, they've got a scaling solution already, and they're looking to scale even more uh, with a couple of technologies that they're implementing now. So they're already ahead of the game. So is it possible that Ethereum might look to Polygon to even speed up, you know, speed them up after they go with Ethereum 
highly possible. Don't know yet, but I think both of those platforms are going to take off. That said, I think in a lot of ways, Polygon being so cheap has a lot more runway than Ethereum in terms of monetary growth for an investor. Me being an investor, that's why I'm looking at Polygon. Doesn't mean that I won't snatch up some Ethereum while it's still at a discount. Like I said, Ethereum is at 3250. A couple of weeks ago, it was at 46. So you start to you start to look at yourself and kind of go, hmm, I think that could be a good price. Get in now, it'll go up. Um, BTC, I'll get it. You know, I've got some BTC, and it'll go up. You know. Um, we're kind of you know behind on what we're doing with BTC, right? Because what I entered for BTC was at a high. So we're behind in what those purchases were. If I look at BTC here, let me just do this so we can see all the transactions in one spot. So BTC, we snatched BTC when it was at this price at 42. So we're at almost nothing there. Um, you can actually see where we are on each one of our purchases. So BTC, we're up 1.82, you know, up a little bit more, up a lot on Matic because they just exploded today. We got we got them in at 212, and Matic right now is at 237. That's pretty good. That's that's pretty good. Um, but you start to realize what you're doing and how you're doing it, and you start to think about, you know, how are people using these technologies, and you know. I understand that things are starting off with games, but what people are not seeing are there are a lot of smart contracts that are happening. The digital linking of two parties or, or one or more parties, two or more parties in a contract to make sure that something gets done and to assure, ensure that it gets done when all of the parameters are met. There are a lot of big things happening on these blockchains, and it's not just about buying coins and everything else. You're literally you know, talking about there are real technologies behind each one of these coins. So that's something to look out for. Um, something else that I was paying attention to, or I started paying attention to, got on, got on, my, uh, on my radar, is this company Helium. One of my friends made an investment in Helium, I believe, HNT, there you go. She made an investment in Helium a while ago. I think she said she's up like 5 or 10%. Helium is very unique. What they're doing, and you can actually mine Helium in a low-cost manner, so less of a hit on the environment. Um, I think it involves an antenna. I haven't looked into it yet, but I'm going to because it wound up on my radar because of her. Um, and then I heard one of the talking heads that I follow. No, I'm not going to give a name. I just don't. I'm not trying to big them up or anything else like that. This is for me to share with you and a part of you, I'm hoping those are my kids. Each one of my kids is interested in how to make money and everything else. And because our schedules are so different coming in and out of the house, um, we, don't always have, we don't always have time to sit down and for me to give all this information to them. So this is how I'm capturing um, everything that I'm learning so that they can do it. So my oldest son, uh, 20 years old, he's got a great cryptocurrency portfolio because I was able to spend some time with him and explain to him what I was looking at, how I'm doing it. And we started that conversation over a year ago about cryptocurrencies. Um, cryptocurrencies, stocks, bonds, um, real estate. We just started talking about you know just everything so that he can start to get an idea about how things move. Um, and he managed his own portfolio. I don't manage his portfolio. I don't tell him what to buy. I share with him what I'm looking at and why. That's it. And he goes off and does his own research. But helium is pretty cool. They're using 5G technology um, to, to do low, low bandwidth um, linking to the internet for IoT, you know, the internet of things. That, I think, is going to be really cool. I think that's something that can actually work. Um, but I need to do some more re research. That's why I put them on the, on the list over here. Uh, another piece of uh, information is... Uniswap is the biggest uh, DEX using Ethereum. PancakeSwap is the biggest DEX on the Binance smart chain. And what that means is, you know, decentralized exchange. So if you look at Coinbase, that is a centralized exchange. Uh, PancakeSwap and Uniswap are 
decentralized, meaning you know, you're making your own purchase, they're there to facilitate the purchase or the trade, and that's it. You, you're, you're purchasing and trading directly from your own wallet. That's what that means. Um, they're the biggest on both of those, and those are pretty big companies. So if you wanted to buy something or trade Ethereum for you know, uh, Gala or, or something else, and you see Uniswap pop up, that's a company you can actually trust. They've been around for a while. They've been in the same game for a long time. That's something to pay attention to. Um, same thing for PancakeSwap. I know the name sounds funny, because when I first heard it, I was like, what? As a matter of fact, one, my friend Lisa, her son's nickname is Pancake. So when, as soon as I heard it, I was like, yo, what? Nah, I'm not. So I did a little bit more research. They've been around for a long time in the same game, doing what they do. So those are things that I look for. Um, there's more in the news today. Um, no, nah, that was just me doing research. Where was it? We talked about PayPal yesterday, so we can get rid of that. Did I actually paste it here? Ah, this one, Associated Press. Associated Press launching a Polygon-based photography NFT platform. That's really big news. That is really big news. You know who, it's, who Associated Press is, the AP, when you look at it, when you're looking at the news and you look at the image and it says, you know, the credit goes to AP slash, and here's the photographer, that's who we're talking about. Um, so to launch that NFT for, the, for their purpose, I think that can be really, really big. And as I heard, when I read it, when I read this, the reason why I stopped on this is I stopped and I said, man, so imagine all of these free photography websites. Yeah, you see where I'm going with that, right? When you look at all those free photography websites, imagine all of that, all of those being NFTs. You want to use it? Sure. You can buy, you can buy a license and here's your license. And then you can trade that license. You can sell that license. You can do whatever it is you want. That's, I mean, you'd have to think about how you would, how you create that business model and make it work on web three, but I can definitely see that happening because it's a business already. Now you're just talking about using a different technology to serve that business. That's kind of cool. Speaking about business, something that I did, was um, I told you guys I went out and I bought uh, domains. I bought unstoppable domains, um, meaning I buy that domain once. I now own bcnsports.crypto, gigblast, rebel reach, rebel vino, rebel visions. I own those domains. I'll never have to pay for them again. Um, but what that means is each one of my companies, so you know we're, we're really pushing rebel vino right now, rebel vino, Kudos to the team. They just signed up their first wine importer today. Great job, team. Uh, Steven, all you guys, just awesome. Uh, a lot to go to Steven. Um, sticking with me for, uh, wow, really long time um, making that happen. But the cool thing is, is that we can now offer an easy way for you to pay us in crypto. So what that does is, it says that using any one of these addresses, you can send me any one of these coins and that will get read. So when you, so when you go to pay me, when you go to pay Rebel Vino and you say rebelvino.crypto, it'll go out, get translated and know where it's supposed to go, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Algorand, Doge, Polygon, which is Matic, or SHIB. Shiba Inu will just will just receive whatever whichever one of those coins you send us. That's huge. If you're a small business, that's a big deal. Um, something else that we're looking into is uh, Gig Blast. Let me just show you what that can do. So this website is powered by Gig Blast. Basically, it's your resume. It's your professional career on steroids, right? Imagine taking this information and making that into an NFT that you can share, that you can share with employers that can trust that it came from you, that it is you. Can't be changed. It's immutable. It's you. So we're thinking about how we can integrate that with uh, Gig Blast 
and the same thing for, for be seen sports. Um, because gig blast is for adults, for jobs, be seen sports is for athletes trying to tout their careers for better positions, you know, going from high school to college, college to pro. It's a good way for them to actually do something. Like you'd be able to create a sports card. There are sports cards that are NFTs. Um, to create your own sports card and market that to wherever you want to go to school or to the teams that you want to play for. Again, immutable information that they'd be able to look at and be able to go verify. That's kind of cool. That really is. So when I say that I'm investing in cryptocurrencies, the underlying technologies, the associated technologies, I'm not just looking at it from a retail consumer space, I'm also looking at it as a small business owner. Um, and we're paying attention to what's going on out there and how that can affect us and how easily we can make moves that can take us to the next level and beyond. Um, there's a term, and I used it yesterday on a video, I said the term was um, being future-proof. Now, there are very few things that are future-proof, right? But looking at this technology in its infancy and learning about it in its infancy can help you become future proof. It can help move you from where you are now to the future. I just, I just told you about that whole thing with um, Associated Press going to, um, going to create that, you know, that universe, right? And let me just zoom back in over here you know, going to create their own F NFT marketplace, you sit there and I, you know, I have a friend who's a photographer and I, I told him, hey, you should pay attention to this. And he's like, man, I, I have no idea about crypto technology or anything else. I said, well, with your talent, you should start paying attention to it. He takes some of the most gorgeous pictures I have ever seen. Gorgeous pictures. So imagine that artist being able to take their art and put it out there and actually get paid be, be in a place where they can market that to a broader audience. I think that's pretty cool. Um, back in the day, I mean, think of think of that NFT as a as a lithograph to hang on your wall. Um, you could sell. You could tell that I need a little bit of help right here. I have a I have a, a chip in the wall that I have to fix. I haven't gotten to that. But imagine if I was able to hang things on the wall and you know, or electronically on my monitors or whatever. Those lit lithographs back in the day used to be that. Now it's NFTs. So I associate the definition of NFTs to a lithograph, which is a limited run of artwork. Um, so there are things that are going on that can actually make things work. But I hope today that I was able to share with you some information about what's going on and how to look at it. I wanted to end on this, which is looking at the, um, looking at the fear and greed index. And like I pointed out to you yesterday, when it gets down to, when it gets this hot, it pops up a little bit and then goes for, a, goes for a run. And then it'll bounce around. This is us going sideways in 2020. And if you look, this is us going sideways in 20, 2020, the end of, uh, at the beginning of 2021. And you look how dark it's starting to get over here in terms of fear. And you say, oh, we might be in position where we're going to spring up again. That could be a very big deal. Because if you look at if you look at our portfolio, our portfolio is in a position where these things could actually spring up, and that could be really great. I mean, beyond the seven, five, five, six, beyond the fifteen, even beyond that, when that spring unloads, right? And then we'll be looking at well, when does it start to indicate that you're going down? And this is what I'm paying attention to. When does it start to peak off and you start to go down? When you hit that hot green and you start to see that green, I'm looking at it and I'm going, yeah, that's probably when I should sell. And it, sound, it looks pretty solid. Yeah, I, I, you hit the hottest green and then you started going down. And then now you're wondering, well, you know, is it going to go down, down, or is it just going to go sideways like it did here? Um, that's what I'm paying attention to. So I'm looking at it, you know, kind of priming right now the same way it primed right here and it went up, is it ready for another pop? Even if it's just a modest pop, that takes you significantly higher than where we are right now. So these are things that I'm paying attention to at the moment. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like 
you know, what do they say? Smash the likes and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it if you did that. Really appreciate if you would um, send me questions and tell your friends about it. I'm just literally just having a conversation about what's going through my head about the kind of moves that I want to make in the crypto space. Hope all is well with you and yours. Have a great evening.